Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another Yamaha motorcycle. It's been a little bit Yamaha-y over the last few weeks and there's damn good reason for that. And that is the fact Yamaha's got some brilliant bikes out for 2024. This is of course the Yamaha MT-09, a bike I absolutely love. I rode the SP version end of last year, the 2023 version, loved it so much. I even sort of considered buying one. That's how much I loved it. It's such a hooligan bike. Well, for 2024, Yamaha are back with a, with a new updated version. The styling has completely changed. They've made internal engine changes. They've changed quick shifters. They've changed the display. It seems that they've listened to all of the criticisms of the old bike and tried to address them all. I've never known a manufacturer try to address all of the criticisms with their machine in like the next evolution. If you're interested in the new MT-09, join me for a little thrash around the countryside. We've got beautiful blue skies, we've got sunshine, we've got a bit of warmth for once. So uh, we'll give this bike a little bit of a thrash and I'll let you know what I think to it. So if that sounds of interest, get yourself a cup of tea and chop C, roll the intro. So there she is, the beautiful, stunning, distinctive, there she is, the distinctive MT-09. Let's, uh, let's jump on. I was actually lucky enough last week to go to the launch of the new uh, XSR 900 GP, and that bike took over a lot of electronics, a lot of the updates from this machine, including the switch gear, including the, the screen and, and all the electronics, how it all works the engine changes so I've spent a little bit of time on this uh, this platform now this new platform and I have to say <laughs> I absolutely love what Yamaha have done with this bike they've taken all of the criticisms and sort of fixed a lot of the things which people sort of highlighted that they they didn't like with last year's version and all of the things I've sort of highlighted with the Yamahas I borrowed last year including like the Tracer and things like that you know like the First example, the fuel gauge. You know, it only had some blocks. Whoa. Oh my word! It's a little bit lively. <laughs> that is one thing with this bike. What I've done on here, I've actually turned off the lift control. So with this new electronics package, you've got full control over slide control, lift control. You, know, you can turn all of those things off, off individually. Plus, you've got different levels of lift control. So I've actually turned them off. And I must say, this bike, with its short wheelbase and the weight, you know, not that much weight over the front, with the electronics fully off, it is an absolute wheelie hooligan. I don't think there's another bike out there, apart from perhaps the Super Duke, which is as much of a wheelie hooligan as this machine. If you like your wheelies, if you like mucking about, this is an incredible fun bike. I think this bike is really just all about fun. And I don't, I don't think actually there's another bike out there, a third load, it's still got some pull. I don't think there's another bike out there which delivers <laughs> as much fun as this machine. Honestly, I know I, I keep banging on about it, but this this CP3 motor is an absolute gem. I loved it in the uh, thank you, sir. I loved it in the GP, and don't forget the GP has the tracer swinging arm. So the GP has a 55 millimeter longer swinging arm than this bike, and the GP also has a quite a lot of weight, or quite a lot, a medium amount of weight over the front end. You're quite upright on this bike. I mean, the pegs are much further back on this machine now, so your feet are behind your hips, I would say, um, but you've still got a very upright position. The bars are quite close to you, so there's not, there's not a massive amount of uh, weight on the front wheel. And as soon as you ride this bike, that, that becomes absolutely apparent. <laughs> you don't have to go very far before you... Uh, before you realise that. And the noise from the airbox, and I, I think this bike is an absolute gem. And this bike is just a smidge over 10,000 pounds. 
what can you buy out there today which delivers as much fun and excitement as this for 10 grand? The suspension on this bike, it feels reasonable, it's, it's pretty plush, it doesn't feel as high spec as what, as what was on the GP. Obviously if you want to go a bit higher spec, the SP version of this bike comes out, I think in June time. You know, the suspension on this, I'm not going to call it budget, it's fully adjustable, it's certainly not budget, but, you know, it's a little bit sort of, you can tell it's not absolutely premium, you know. It's reasonable, but not top-end suspension. I mean, the riding position on this bike, as I said, you're quite upright. Oh, listen to that blipper. Blipper is fantastic, by the way. But you're quite upright on this, so you do lack a little bit of feel from the front wheel. Oh, man. This, this, this is a go-straight-to-jail sort of bike. You really do have to be a little bit careful on this one, especially when you've got the wheelie control off. And in the sport mode, apparently the, uh, the maps, when you're in the sport, it's a slightly more aggressive throttle than the one-to-one. -one. <laughs> so it's slightly more aggressive than one-to-one. -one. There's a deer in the road. You don't want to be seeing that, do you? That's one way to, uh, to slow your progress down. So there she is, the 2024 Yamaha MT-09. Let's have a little bit of a closer look at the details. So one of the biggest talking points, biggest criticisms of the old bike was that sort of Cyclops headlight. For 2024, they've changed the design and you've now got like two little running lights and a singular light in the middle. So I think the front end does look much better. It's still a little bit Marmite. I wouldn't say it was, it's not a beautiful bike. I mean, these sort of dark side of Japan uh, MT ranges, they're a little bit funky looking, aren't they? But that is a definite improvement from last year. That headlight is the same headlight which is on the new GP model I was riding the other week. So it's the same headlight as the GP. Unfortunately, I've not been able to ride it at night, so I can't report back how good that headlight is in the dark. Sorry, uh, I feel like I failed you. So new for this year, we have a new Brembo master cylinder. We've got fully adjustable levers, not only on the brake, you know, for span, but also an adjustable span on the clutch as well. Fully adjustable twiddlers, compression and rebound damping, plus preload, of course. The gearbox has had some tweaks for this year, including some extra dog leg changes to improve the, the gear change. I never had a problem with the gear change anyway, but they've made some changes to it. It's got a, a better generator. It's got another 100 watts of power through the charging system. Again, I wasn't aware of any charging related issues with these bikes, but they've, they've taken, obviously there was because they've made some changes. Another big styling change for this year is it now has a like a rear end to the bike. It's not just a seat, it's not just one big seat. You've got two separate seat units and a, and like a back end. So I think that was that was probably my biggest criticism with the styling of the old bike. It's the same as the MT10. You know, it's just like a two a one piece plank seat. Didn't look quite right, but that sort of and it was you know very flat and level. That now sticks up in the air a little bit. So I think styling wise, what they've done with this bike, it does look much much better as you've heard this thing sounds amazing when you open it up and that's because of these vents and all of the noise from this engine comes through the airbox you know the exhaust uh, you can't get noise out of exhaust anymore to meet sort of your emissions so yamaha have tuned taking all of their musical know-how and they've created a, a musical airbox that delivers lovely induction noise out to the rider through these vents really clever idea Another thing last year's bike was criticised for was quite a small dash and Yamaha have gone to town on the dash on this bike now and they've thrown every feature and function at it but it's a really clear, easy to read dash. You've got different themes, let me show you some themes. They're all a little bit funky, the themes. So I, I like something a little bit more plain and simple which is why I've gone for that one. The fuel gauge has an extra blob and you've got a range till empty. The switch gear is all new. You've got this sort of funky indicator arrangement where you have to push to indicate and then push again the same direction to cancel. And a light press will do like a lane change. But it takes a little bit of getting used to not having a, you know, cancelling indicator by pushing the same direction again. It's also self-cancelling. 
but that's the thing it's fine i like it it's nice the buttons are big so you can actually push it without having to look so it's become sort of muscle memory indicating on this you've also got the cruise control up here you've got this new jog wheel rather than that sort of scroll wheel on the old bike that's much much easier to use so there we are a very very quick walk around of the new mt09 let's jump back on oh dear let's set it all down a little bit it's hard not to get carried away on this bike it really is if, if you're an absolute nutter like me it's hard to keep things under control one thing which is nice you know if you're going for a 30 like this keep you in check is you have cruise control so we can set that i'm hoping at 30 there we go oh it's a divine little thing it handles well enough but like i say you do lack a little bit of feel from that front tire because of the riding position and then in greg's review he said it's fit some flat bars on here and i completely agree that would put a little bit more weight over the front that would probably settle the bike a little bit you know it's going to keep the wheel down a little bit because it, it wheelies so much it will actually hamper your progress going forward because it, if you just open the throttle in first or second it will wheelie you know and if you're trying to make a quick getaway you'll be slowed down because you're going to have to close the throttle or the bike's going to have to electronically reduce the power to keep that front wheel down so what we will do we will see how good the factory lift control is and we put it in the lowest setting and we can see how high it will let the wheel come up in control because obviously turning it off this bike becomes a, a real handful you've got to know how to handle a bike coming right up and be covering the back brake it's not a beginner machine with that lift control off it could all end very badly if you're not careful third gear look at the grunt you got in third and even in third if i hit this crest hard <laughs> whoa it wheelie and like I say, the suspension's good, but it's not really good. And I think you could get out of shape quite easily on this, I think. So you, ha you have to treat this bike with respect. Let's have a little push through this section here. I could probably play with the suspension, actually. I haven't played with it. It's a little bit bouncy. It might be worth sort of increasing the compression and rebound damping a little bit for me. But it changes direction so quickly because the front end's so light. I think it weighs 193 kilos wet. You know, so it's certainly not a heavy machine, but only stretch the imagination. <laughs> and it dances, literally dances through the bends. I have to lean forward to keep the front end down and on the ground. Literally have to lean forward to keep it under control. Suspension's actually pretty plush. Handles the bumps really well. Doesn't go, you know, doesn't bang through the stroke, but yeah, it's a little bit bouncy feeling. Certainly not as premium as the GP XSR, and certainly not as premium as respect as what the SP is going to be. The fuel gauge is now sorted with that extra blob of fuel on the on the gauge. You know, an extra segment of fuel gives you much more accurate sort of fuel gauge you've also got a range to empty here as well so you know exactly how much fuel you've got left which you really didn't know on the old machine I only had like three segments of fuel if i remember rightly and the first half a tank didn't even move so it really wasn't very accurate at all so that's one thing yamaha's taken on board another criticism i had was with the, the navigation i mean i was talking about the tracer when i was talking about the navigation i wasn't really expecting navigation on a thousand pound you know fun naked machine but they've added full navigation on here and with the tracer you needed the garmin subscription to their app for this year you don't need the subscription anymore so you can do the full garmin integration without the subscription so if i go into this here i've also i've set this up already if we go into maps look it will come up with a map you know where i am and you can set a route and i mean just to have a map on the screen like that i mean that's all included it's, it's connected to my phone so in my gp review i said you know i don't think you need the phone you do need the phone on you but it's free let's have a little bit through the hill climb i mean it's it's like i say because of that front end because of the the weight over the front you don't get oodles of confidence to lay it right over i mean it's no 890 duke on the handling front it's probably no street triple either on the handling front it's more about fun it's more comfortable than those bikes oh we're stuck behind a, a Vauxhall Astra van but you know you're, you're lacking a little bit 
a feel from the road maybe to really have the confidence to push it right over. I think you need the SP. I'd be really interested to see what the SP is like, just to give you that little bit of extra. The tyres of the Bridgestone, I think it's the S23s, but I don't think they're the full version. They're a special version or a single compound version of the S23. So not the full, full fat S23. So the bike is absolutely fully loaded with electronics. 6S time you, slide control, brake control, traction control, lift control. You know, it's as good as any other 20 gram bike, what they've put on here. And the fact that you can turn off lift control to traction control, or you can turn off just the slide control. You've got adjustable levels, three different levels of all of those things as well. I mean, you don't expect that on a 10 gram bike, that level of sophistication. I'm gonna put the lift control back on and I want to see how much uh, how much lift you can do with the lift back on. So if we go into settings, uh, vehicle function, stability, turn lift control on. Uh, and then let's go into, we're well, in street mode, let's put it in sport and everything's on one. So let's see how much lift we can have with the bike controlling the lift, but in the minimum setting. If you see what I mean, that makes sense. So let's just get it out for him first. Let's try that again, but be a bit braver this time. Let's try that one more time. Yeah, it's really good. A really good system there. Really precise. Kiss it 12 inches off the ground and then just holds it there. That's first gear, more or less full power, as brave as I dare be, and it just it comes up and just holds it there. That's great, isn't it? That's really, really good. These modern wheelie control systems are so good. That little pop as you change gear, that high revs as you click it up a gear. Oh, that sounds amazing. I don't know if it'll come out on the camera, but as you change gear and you're really revving it, it goes like boom, 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 boom. Oh, imagine it with a, a full system on. Yeah, this is excellent. I think the, uh, I'm really excited for the SP version now. I'm really excited for the SP because I think this is, this, the bike's so good and the engine's so good, the chassis's so good, I think the suspension, well, I could have a play with it, to be fair, I've just jumped on it, but it's quite bouncy, it might just need a bit more compression dampening and rebound dampening into it, but as from the factory, it's quite bouncy. So I need to maybe have a play, because it's so capable, the chassis and the engine, that at the moment, the suspension could get you in trouble. There's only one thing I don't like on this machine now, and that is the exhaust. It's just some horrible big box under the under the bike. So if I was getting one of these, I'd have to budget for an exhaust. You can get the, the Yamaha accessory, a crop of inch system, but that will retain the cat. I mean, if, if you're happy with that, I'm sure you get a bit more volume out of it, but it's not going to be massively different, but it will certainly look better and probably save a fair bit of weight as well. But I'd probably go after market on an exhaust if I was getting one of these, and maybe with a tune as well. I've read on uh, Van, Die Van Diemen's uh, website, they do a, a system for the 23, which I think is the same as this, and it gives an extra five horsepower without a tune. So you'd be talking like 122 horsepower without a tune, probably another three or four picked up with it tuned. So you could be pushing sort of 125 horsepower, that would be <laughs> a very, very fun motorcycle. The brakes are nice. It's quite a nice sort of feel from the front brakes. There's a bit, I think it's the same brakes which is on the GP actually. The rear brake is also really nice. So it's quite nice to sort of feather a little bit of rear in and I'm not upsetting the suspension too much. A bit like you do on a venture bike. Because I think because you're quite upright and you've got a bit of a lack of weight over the front wheel you can notice that. So there we are, the new 2024 MT-09. 
what can I say? I love the I love last year's bike. Well, the SP one, I didn't try to stand one, but I love the SP. The SP is a bit more composed than this, for sure, and I'm sure the new SP will probably be even more composed again. But it's such a fun motorcycle. I think it is definitely the most fun middle way you can buy. If, if top of your priority list is fun, when you're buying a bike, this is the middle way for you. It's more fun than anything else out there. It's just an absolute riot to, to ride. It really is. It's smiles per mile. There's also very few gripes about it. The only gripes I have with this is this slightly sort of snatchy clutch arrangement. It's slightly snatchy, the clutch on this bike. And that's the same on a lot of Yamaha models. Actually, slightly more so than the uh, the GP I rode the other week in Portugal. So it could be something to do with how the bikes are run in. For 10 grand, this thing is an absolute steal. It sounds amazing. And yeah, what they've done with the airbox sounds absolutely brilliant. This is one of my, or if not, my favourite middleweight, and I think once the uh, SP comes out, I'm going to be straight on that. <laughs> and I think that could well be my favourite middleweight. And then we will do a comparison with the M29 SP and the new 990 Duke. The new 990 Duke is fantastic. You know, it's a really complete package that bike. It handles so well. Yeah, it's a very, very complete package, the 990 Duke. It's not as much fun as this. So maybe the SP will bring, the, you know, just tone this down and tune this so it's a slightly more dynamic bike. You know, it can go around the corners as well as it can lift the front wheel. So I think it's definitely going to be a 990 Duke versus MT09 SP comparison. So if you're interested in that one, you know what you've got to do. Press subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, guys.